All right. So when I left off, I have this one compound path. Remember, I can turn them on and off here. So I have that one, I have this one, and then I created an ellipse, just that little mauve shape ellipse. And now I'm gonna show you how I can subtract one shape from another shape. So in order to see the sketch underneath, I selected that path and I took its opacity down to about 59%. If I click on the ellipse, the ellipse is at 100%, but it's the right shape. Now what I want to do is I want to hold down shift and click on the other one. So click on one and then the other. And now both paths are selected. And when that happens, you'll see all these different tools. I'll zoom in. And these tools allow you to do different things, like to subtract one from the other. And so I'm going to subtract one from the other, and that cuts the ellipse out. So notice I don't have an ellipse layer anymore. Instead, I have a path. If I turn everything else off, I have a path that has a big hole in it. So I can turn that back up to 100%. So that's how you cut shapes out from your, your vector paths. So now if I take the opacity back down, I can see those other shapes I need to cut out. And once you're done with a path, like I'm done with this one, I can lock it with a little padlock. And that way I can't accidentally click on it and mess it up. But I'm far from, from done on this. I need to create some new paths on top. And instead of trying to do them all with just the pen tool, like this one, for instance, I can try just using the shape tools. And then double clicking and maybe deleting. and straightening the bottom. So there's lots of different ways to plot these anchors. And then just stretching these down. And if I want it wider at the top, it's going to tug at the corners. And I want this to be horizontal. Now here's the problem that I found with vector is when you pick a path, then you double click it, you'll get anchor points to edit on the outside edge of the path, but where you cut it out from the inside, I don't have uh, the ability to edit those anchor points anymore. So when you cut something out, make sure it's the shape you want. So make sure you get the outside shape first. But now if I'm happy with it, I can select them both by holding down shift. Come on. Make sure they're unlocked. Make sure they're both visible. And then use the subtract tool to cut one shape out of the other. Very easy. Now, there's no way to, to select that shape again and use it here. So I could go back before and I can click it and then I can do command C command V to make a duplicate so command C you know copy paste to make a duplicate and then I can stretch it here and I can take its opacity down so I can see the sketch underneath
tighten it up a little bit, change this bottom. To double click to get the anchors, get the angle there. Want this to be vertical. We want this to be a little bit narrower and maybe on a slight tilt, like the bottom. And now I can add anchor points for the eyebrow. I want it to be nice and sharp there. Sometimes you have to zoom in quite a bit to see what's going on. to be a little bit flatter. Slight angle. Okay, now I can take that, copy it, paste it. So command C, command V. Now I can flip it horizontal, stretch it, tilt it, rotate it, you know, all these different things, try to get it to work for what I want. I think that back edge is right. And then, of course, you have control of each anchor point if you double click. So often logo designs, just for simplicity's sake, will have a lot of copy and pasting, a lot of internal repetition that's helpful to the design process. Remember, you can always get rid of anchor points just by hitting delete, and you can always add more just by clicking on the path. because I, I want this eyebrow to look like it's coming through, I want to make sure I get those sh shapes kind of lined up. before I subtract it, I want 
to make sure I can tweak everything where I'm happy with it. Because once I subtract it, I won't be able to edit these anchor points anymore. At least not in the vector program. I could in Illustrator. These are the, the lip of the horn-rimmed glasses. Oops. Might have just made a mistake there. <laughs> I hit Command R hoping it would give me rulers that I could do guides. It didn't. It did something else, but I just have to kind of visually look and see if those feel lined up. They look pretty good. So now I have multiple shapes to cut out from one shape. So what do I do? Hold down Shift, select all of them, and then use Subtract. And it will cut those shapes out. So now I still only have two paths, this path and this path. Put it up at 100% opacity. See, I'm getting there. My black shapes are coming. Now before I do the complicated shapes inside the glasses, I will show you how to add on to a path. And so I will do this bottom squiggle with the pen tool. First, I'll just kind of plot it simply. Erring on the side of too many anchor points. Maybe it's sometimes too few, kind of clunky. Sometimes really overshooting it. Trying to keep it pretty basic. I always do Command Z if you, I make a misstep. They're going to overshoot, so I make sure they overlap and go to the other side of the line. So this is what I mean by working on both sides of the line. So I can really control it. And I want it to be a little bit thicker on the bottom. People that have had a lot of practice use vector imaging tools every day. It's just amazing how quickly they can trace something with vectors. And it's just, that's not me, but it's, it has to do with just getting used to how the computer sees it. Being a good programmer. 